Today we are going to drink life down to the marrow and see as many things as we can in London in one day. We're going to assume that you have turned up in London with only 24 hours before you need to head off somewhere else. Uh, we're also going to assume that you've never been to London before, so you want to see all the big tourist sites in the most efficient way possible. I'm a London tour guide, so knowing how to connect up all the big tourist spots in an efficient way is basically my field of study, and I've been studying it for years. Now, because our purpose is to cram in as much as possible into one day, we are going to have to make some compromises on cost. This isn't a free day out, this is a day out where we're seeing as much as possible. Although, if this video does well, I'll consider making one where I talk about how to have the cheapest possible London day out. There are a couple of different ways of doing it pretty close to free. But sometimes it is simply faster to pay. I am going to be showing my running total for the cost of the day in the bottom right of the screen, although yours might end up being a little bit different depending on you know, what you buy for lunch, and also whether or not you've already got a contactless payment card for the travel system in London. The other thing about this day is that you are going to be tired at the end. There's a lot of walking, but I have built in rest stops that get more frequent as the day goes on. One last thing, I don't normally leave the house to make videos. I normally make them sat in my living room. I've never tried being I guess a travel vlogger? And it is hard. So as we go, I'm also going to talk a bit about how I struggled to get this footage. And you'll see that I am not able to make London look as pretty as an Instagrammer travel vlogger would. I'm also filming in November when there's a lot of Christmas decorations up in London, which I'm sure will not date this footage at all. But since we're going into London, let's do it like in the movies. Okie dokie, so I don't know exactly where you'll be coming from on the day. I've picked the international arrivals at St Pancras, but this will work just as well if you're coming in uh, in Paddington or one of the other big termini. The first thing you're going to want to do wherever you're coming from is figure out a way of getting around London's transport network. There are two different payment methods that I recommend. Either you have a contactless payment card, so some sort of debit card that's got a contactless symbol on it. If you don't have one of those, you're going to have to get yourself an Oyster card. And you can get one of those from these little machines that they have at all the tube stations. Do this before you leave, okay? Because it's, it's kind of hard to get them otherwise. You are going to need a separate card for everybody in your party. You can't just use it and then pass it back over the barriers, it won't work. So if there's anybody who's not got an individual contactless payment card, get them an Oyster card. Oyster cards have gone up lately and uh, you don't get that back anymore, it's not refundable. But the idea with an Oyster card is that you, you can just load it up with however much money you like and you just keep topping it up as you, uh, as you use it. So yeah, get yourself some sort of payment method for getting around London before you leave. I actually, I prefer the Oyster because it does shave milliseconds off how fast the barriers open, which as a Londoner I find important. There's also some loos directly opposite the international arrivals door, so you can use the loo there if you like. Now something I want to do on this itinerary is pack in as many different kinds of transport as I can. London has a really, really good transport network that we're very proud of. And so I want you guys to experience lots of different kinds. So we're going to take a taxi to St Paul's. If you head to this sign in St Pancras, you will find the taxi rank and you'll see a huge line of black cabs waiting to take their fares. London's black cabs will all carry a wheelchair user by default, every single one of them. They are built with a load of space inside to park your wheelchair and the cab driver will explain which way to face and where to put your brakes on. So you technically don't have to do this by taxi. Um, you can get the tube in. City Mapper, which is the app I would recommend for public transport in London, that says you can do it in 13 minutes by public transport, which is a filthy lie. Like the walking to the circle line and then from Barbican Station alone will take that, let alone the actual train journey. The cab for me took 20 minutes, but it might be slightly different for you depending on traffic. The other nice thing is about the cab is that it allows you to have a bit of a relax right off the bat. You don't have to worry about getting off at the right station. 
you can chill out a bit. It's accessible by default, which Barbican Station is not. And you get to see London. So, for example, we went past the British Library and this cool old building called Staple Inn. The cab took me 20 minutes, but that might be a little bit different for you depending on traffic. The journey cost £17 um, and I put an extra two quid on as a tip, um, but that is optional. So yes, the cab is going to be one of the more expensive parts of the day, although the more of you there are in your party, the better value this is. If you go on the tube or a bus, you have to pay for everybody separately, whereas the more of you sharing a cab, the better value the cab gets. Um, they have five seats in them usually, although there are some that have more. So our destination is St Paul's Cathedral. St Paul's is London's cathedral and it's absolutely gorgeous. Uh, it's also very unique. It's built in this really specific architectural style called English Baroque, which no other English cathedral is built in. So it looks really striking. When you pull up in the cab, they'll take you to the front steps of St Paul's and you'll recognise these from many Hollywood movies. It's been in uh, Mary Poppins and Lawrence of Arabia and most recently in Paddington 2. Uh, this is where Hugh Grant impersonates a nun and then a bishop. Now, we're not going inside today, but sitting on the steps is a really nice photo op. And what I would recommend is actually walking around the side of the cathedral. Um, if you go around the back, there's this shopping centre. Bear with me. Um, the shopping centre gives you this really gorgeous view. It's like built to mirror St Paul's and give you these beautiful shots of it. And then just next to that, there's this really nice garden. This is actually really new. This only opened a couple of years ago. And they have this pool of water there where you can see the dome of the cathedral reflected in it as well. It's absolutely gorgeous. Now from here, we are going to get the number 15 bus down to the tower. And it is for this reason that you needed to get your Oyster cards early. They will not sell you an Oyster card on the bus. They don't take cash. You have to have a card ready. So you want to go to this stop. When you see the number 15 bus approaching, just put your left hand out and that means they'll stop. They'll open the doors for you and next to the driver you'll see a little yellow or white circle. Tap your card onto that circle, it will beep, it will flash green and it will take £1.75. Um, this is a flat rate for any bus journey. You can go all the way down the bus line if you want to on that £1.75. However, we're not going all the way down to the end. We are going to the tower. The number 15 is usually a double decker, so you can go upstairs if you like. However, be aware, if all the seats are taken on the upper deck, then you cannot stand on the upper deck because it will start making the bus top heavy. So if there's no seats up at the top, just come back down to the bottom deck. This is where I started running into how difficult it is to be a travel vlogger. I simply did not want to film on the bus because it was quite crowded and I was embarrassed. Honestly, I don't know how people do it. At the front of the bus, you'll see a little LED display that tells you what the next stop is. When you see the words Tower of London come up, simply push the bell. You only need to do it once and that means the bus driver will know to stop. And you'll be able to hop out right outside the Tower of London. You're going to head down to the entrance for the Tower of London. Um, I recommend getting tickets for the Tower in advance, especially if it's the school holidays, and you can do that on their website. Before we go in, I like to get a pan of raisin from Paul, which was £3.10, but that is totally optional. It's a secret tool that'll help us later. So the Tower is London's castle. It has been here for nearly a thousand years and lots and lots of stuff has happened here. Um, most famously, it's been the site of executions. Over 100 people have been executed on Tower Hill. Um, of those, a about a dozen executed within the walls, including most famously three queens, Anne Boleyn, Catherine Howard and Lady Jane Grey. I don't know how busy it's going to be when you go, so I'm not going to advise that you try and see everything. Basically, you want to be done by about half 11 or 12-ish. So cram in however much you like in order to, to leave at that time. But whatever you do, go to the crown jewels first. The crown jewels are right at the back, on the opposite side from the entrance. And as the day goes on, the queue for it will get longer. So you want to do it first. The crown jewels are not just like random bits of jewellery that the monarchy owns. They are pieces that get used in the coronation. 
even if you're not really into monarchy or even if you're not really into jewellery, um, just the sheer amount of craftsmanship on display. You'll see the orb, you'll see the scepter. Um, there's a lot of really famous individual stones in the crowns. So, for example, the Koh-i-Noor diamond, um, the Cullinan diamond. The Cullinan one is absolutely massive. It's about the size of an egg. It's huge. Also, the crown jewels is one of the few parts of the tower that is wheelchair accessible. As for what to do after the crown jewels, it depends on how busy it is in the tower, how much time you have. Um, try and find one of the beef eaters and say hello to them. And they are the traditional guardians of the tower. They are all real soldiers who do tours. They're very friendly. You can ask them questions. You can ask them about their uniforms. Um, and I also like to go and meet the other residents of the tower, who are the ravens. The legend goes that if ravens ever leave the tower, the kingdom will fall. So there's always uh, about 10 or so ravens hanging around the tower at any one time. They are allowed to fly around free, they just stay here because they get fed here, to be honest. And this is where our secret tool from earlier comes in. You see, the ravens are really used to having humans about, and they do get fed at the tower, but at the same time, they do like to steal food from tourists as well. One of the beef eaters has the job of just looking after the ravens, and he says that um, they're not stealing food because they're hungry. Um, because they already get fed and they're stealing food because they're pack animals and if they steal some food off you it puts them above you in the pack ranking so i like to get a snack and eat it in front of the ravens to show dominance the rest of the tower is going to be trickier if you're a wheelchair user um if that's you i would spend your time chilling out in the outside sections and soaking in the atmosphere, talking to the beef eaters, having a look at the ravens. You can also go around the ground floor of the White Tower. If you go around the back, um, there's uh, an entrance there that's level. If you can manage some steps, I would really recommend going to see the chapel of St. Peter Ad Vincula. Anne Boleyn is buried there, Catherine Howard is buried there, in unmarked graves. I'd also recommend the what's called the Beecham Tower. I know it's spelled Beauchamp, but I promise you it's pronounced Beecham. Beecham Tower was one of the places where people were imprisoned within the tower, and it is absolutely covered in 16th century graffiti on the inside. There are people who've left their names, people who've left prayers, people who've left pictures. There's a lot of pictures of skulls. It is genuinely haunting to find these messages from people who didn't know whether that would be the last thing they'd ever write. About half an hour before lunchtime, you're going to want to leave the tower and we're going to do a little bit of a walk over to Borough Market for lunch. Now, the tower is the last place we're going to have loos for a while, so use these before you go. Technically, there are loos at our lunch destination in Borough Market, but they're not good. As you come out of the tower, you'll get a great view of Tower Bridge. This is London's most famous bridge. It's the one that opens in the middle. It's the one that, I don't know, the Spice Girls jump over in a bus. Now, as you exit the tower, if you turn left, you can get up the stairs and cross over the bridge. Um, if you're a wheelchair user, technically you can go all the way around the tower and you can still cross the bridge that way, but it's going to take you so much longer. I, I, I would maybe just take a taxi to Borough Market, honestly. But if you're doing the walk, we are going to cross over Tower Bridge. You get a fantastic view of the city from this side. Um, this huge cluster of skyscrapers where a genuinely drastic portion of our GDP goes through. Uh, it's full of insurance brokers and stock markets and bankers. This is another place where I was finding it really tricky to be a travel vlogger. Like, if you want to film something on the opposite side of the road, do you know that it's statistically absolutely certain that a van will stop in front of you? <laughs> I didn't know that. Once you've gone over Tower Bridge, you want to go down the stairs again and carry on upstream. Now, if you're coming on a Monday, that is the only day Borough Market is closed. So on a Monday, I would get something to eat from more London, the area around City Hall. If not, carry on upstream until you get to Borough Market. 
This is a really nice walk. You're along the riverside. You'll see HMS Belfast, which is a World War II era Navy ship. Um, and you'll see Hayes Galleria, which has this cool like art piece, this art installation that's also a ship. And then you'll get to Borough Market itself. Um, now, Borough Market will be heaving. So that's why I like to have lunch a little bit early when I'm going to Borough Market. If you get there at 12, you should be all right. If you get there at one, it might be a bit packed. The food in Borough Market is absolutely gorgeous. Um, they tend to like stalls that are very, very specific, that have this real niche. So you'll get people who are experts in Lincolnshire sausages or foraged mushrooms or organic honey. Um, there are some stalls that are for um, buying food to take home and cook. And there are some stalls that are for eating hot food right then and there. So it's also a really nice place to get gift ideas. Uh, the longest queue I saw was for this paella place. That looks really nice. If you want fish and chips while you're in London, um, you've got the fish kitchen, which is a really good place to get that. Those are the prices. It is more expensive than a normal fish and chips, but if you want one while you're here, this is a good place for it. I ended up at this Japanese rice bowl place where I got this really nice tofu and aubergine rice bowl. It had all these different colours and flavours. It had this lovely kind of umami soy flavour. Uh, much recommended. Here's the prices for those. Now, technically there is seating within Borough Market, but I've never found a free seat in there. So what I like to do is go and sit down by the Golden Hind, which is a replica of a 16th century English ship that was the first English ship ever to circumnavigate the globe. Once you're all refueled and rested up, you're gonna take the tube for the next section of our journey. So you're gonna go to London Bridge Station and you're gonna take the Jubilee Line, which is the gray colored line, to Westminster. And both of these stations are wheelchair accessible. For the rest of the afternoon, we're gonna head around Westminster and give ourselves a little walking tour. I should say everything from here on in will be wheelchair accessible. Westminster is very good with dropped curbs. Under 11s go free on the tube, so what you want to do is find the wide barrier rather than the ordinary narrow ones. Tap your card on the barriers and push your kid in front of you before you go through yourself. So you want to take the line westbound, go a couple of stops down until you get to Westminster. If you take exit four, you will come out directly underneath Big Ben. Now, do not stop immediately outside the tube station entrance to get this picture. What you want to do is cross over the road and get your pictures from the other side. Um, it'll be easier to get the whole thing in frame from there anyway. Also over the road, you have the most popular red phone box in the country. Um, there will generally actually be a queue for this one. That's how popular it is. It's up to you whether you want to queue for this or not. Um, there are plenty of other red phone boxes that you can get pictures at if you want. Uh, but just know that none of the others will have Big Ben in the background. So it's up to you. Then you want to head across Parliament Square and towards Westminster Abbey. Westminster Abbey is where we have coronations. We have been crowning monarchs for a thousand years in here. And it's also where a lot of them are buried. There's about 18 monarchs buried in Westminster Abbey. And not just monarchs, but people from the whole tapestry of English history. So there's famous writers like Geoffrey Chaucer and Charles Dickens buried there. Famous scientists like Isaac Newton and Stephen Hawking. Now we're not heading inside today, but if you go round to the West Front, that's the really beautiful side. You can get some lovely photos from there. And if you keep an eye out, have a look over the door, you'll see a row of statues. And normally statues on a church like this would be statues of like ancient kings or biblical figures or saints. But you might recognise some of these people. If you look at the one in the middle, you might spot Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, at this point, it started raining. I, I don't know what you're supposed to do if you're a travel vlogger and it rains. Like, cool. Now all my footage is terrible. It's ruined. I might as well go home, except like, what if it stops raining in 20 minutes? Oh my God, this is so stressful. Like if you have a grey day, which is a sizable portion of days in London, then all your footage is just going to look like mine, which is grey rubbish. Do you only film for 20 days a year? Is that it? We're going to head to St. James's Park to get out of the rain. Um, as I was heading there, I saw the Kingsguard march past with their band, um, which is the kind of bonus that happens when you're around Westminster. St. 
James's Park is one of the royal parks in London. They generally used to be like hunting grounds for old palaces. And nowadays they're open to the public. Uh, St. James's is not the biggest, but I think it's the prettiest. You've got this really, really nice lake. We're going to head to this little cafe to get out of the rain. You can have a drink and a snack. I got myself a San Pellegrino and this rocky road thing, which was really nice. Um, you can sit inside or you can sit out on the porch. Now there are loos here, so you can use this as a loo stop, but you do need to buy something. They are pretty strict about that in here. After our little rest stop, we're going to head along the lakeside. At one point, the pavement heads down alongside the lake and it's a really nice place to see swans and coots and mallards and to see people breaking the rule about not feeding the birds. You might even be lucky enough to get a glimpse of St. James's Park's pelicans. St. James's Park has six pelicans. Now, I've often found that Americans aren't very impressed about pelicans, but they're not native to Britain, so they're super impressive to me. They're allowed to pretty much free roam around the park, and they have a little island on the lake that's just for them if they want to get out of the public eye. As you walk alongside the lake, there'll be a bridge across the lake, and around the end of the bridge, there's these trees that where the branches are quite low down to the pavement, this is your best place to spot parakeets. Parakeets are also not native to Britain and nobody knows exactly where they came from. There's lots of urban legends about Jimi Hendrix keeping parakeets when he lived in London, uh, but we don't know for certain. What we do know is that they love it here. They've been here since probably the 1960s and they are spreading out. Now they can be found in every single borough in London and as far north as Birmingham. Again, you are not supposed to feed them because it can make them sick. You can be giving them a bad diet. But if you hold out your hand like you've got some food, they will often come and check you out anyway. So you can get them to come and sit on you. I had one sit on my head and one sit on my hand while I was there. At the end of St. James's Park, you will see Buckingham Palace. This is the main London home for the monarch. Um, on the day I went, Charles was actually in. You can tell whether he's in or not. Um, they have a different flag depending on whether he's in. When he is in, they show this flag, which is called the Royal Standard. And when he's not in, they show the normal UK flag. The road leading up to Buckingham Palace is called the Mall. They often close the Mall off to traffic uh, when there's someone important coming through or when the King's Guard need to march up and down. Um, and obviously there'd been somebody coming through earlier. And I think they must have actually like taken out the traffic lights for them so that they didn't need to stop at the traffic lights because uh, when I went they were putting the traffic lights back in again like what do you do if you're a travel vlogger and you walked all the way out here hoping for like a perfect shot of Buckingham Palace without a friggin construction van in the way what what do you do Next up, you're going to walk back down the Mall. When I was there, they were having a state visit from the South Korean president. So there was all these South Korean flags hanging up down the Mall. Um, God knows why they put these when they don't need them. Like they must have like two dozen flags for every country in a room somewhere. And then more British flags. So wh where do you put them? Is there a flag shed somewhere? <laughs> Maybe that's why Buckingham Palace needs all those rooms. It's just flag rooms. At the end of the mall, you will find yourself in Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square is where Londoners come to celebrate. It's where we celebrate New Year's, the end of Ramadan, Diwali, Pride. It's also where we come to protest. If you're here on a weekend, especially on a Saturday, there's a good chance you'll see at least one protest. Sometimes you see two or three at once. Now, from here on in, I am assuming that you are tired. So there are lots of places to sit down. You've also got loos here in Trafalgar Square. I think they're 50p here. And you can pay by card if that's easier. So if you need a rest, feel free to have a sit down in Trafalgar Square for a little bit. Do some people watching. Have a look at the fountains. Then you're going to head up behind the National Gallery to Chinatown. There are loads of places to get something nice to eat here. You're greeted with this beautiful gate that was made in Beijing. All the street signs in Chinatown are bilingual. You've got these red and gold lanterns hanging over the street. It's really pretty. After Chinatown, you're going to head down into Leicester Square. Leicester Square is famous for its cinemas. We have three big cinemas here, The View, The Odeon and The Empire. And this is where red carpet premieres happen in London. And because of this connection to the film industry, a couple of years ago, they put in a lot of statues of film and TV characters. You can see Mary Poppins at one of the entrances to the square and looming over you on the 
top of the Odeon is the Dark Knight himself. And again, it's a good place to have a seat and have a rest if you're feeling tired. By now, we're coming towards the end of the day, so we're going to head across the road and finish up in Covent Garden. Covent Garden is a, basically a square with a really nice market in the middle, but it's really well known for its buskers. So these are street performers. If you come to Covent Garden during the day, you'll see street performers there. And whenever you come, you know that they're going to be good. Because if you want to busk in Covent Garden, you have to audition. Depending on the busking pitch you go to, you might see a string quartet, you might see opera singers, or you might see a circus act, which is the most famous kind of Covent Garden busker. Because it had been raining, there wasn't anyone at the circus pitch when I went, but in the past I've seen people juggling on unicycles, there's a guy who limbos under a stick that's on fire, so you can have some free entertainment, chill out, chuck a fiver in the hats, and this is where you're going to find somewhere for dinner. There's loads of nice places to eat around Covent Garden, so I'll just give you a couple of different recommendations, but I'd, I'd really recommend walking around yourself and finding somewhere that appeals to you. If you go down New Row, they've got some really nice places down there. You've got Mother Mash, which is like a proper Cockney pie and mash shop. You've got the Old Chang Kee, which is Singaporean food. You've got Honipoke, which is these Hawaiian-style rice bowls. Dishoom in Covent Garden is a really good Indian restaurant. There might be a queue, depending on what time of day you go. Or if you really want to push the boat out, you can head to Clos Maggiore. Ma Maggiore? Yeah, surely it's Maggiore, right? On King Street, the most romantic restaurant in London. Here you can have a well-earned sit down, have a look through your camera roll and see just how much you've been able to see today. You've been in a London black cab, you've seen St Paul's Cathedral, you've travelled on a red double-decker bus, you've gone round the tower, you've seen the crown jewels, you've met the Tower Ravens, you've walked over Tower Bridge, you've got lunch at Borough Market, you've been on the Tube, you've seen Big Ben, you've seen red phone boxes, you've seen Westminster Abbey, you've seen Buckingham Palace, You've been through Trafalgar Square and Leicester Square and Chinatown, and finally you've seen Covent Garden. You will be pretty knackered by this point, but you have absolutely packed it in today, my friend. Now, if you do still have some energy in you, you are in the right place to go and see a show in the West End tonight. You're around that area. But equally, I would not blame you if you headed back to your lodgings. If this video does well, I might do some more of these. Uh, I could do the absolute cheapest possible day in London. Um, I could do a day that's a bit more wheelchair friendly. I could do a day that's a bit more kid friendly. But I hope you've enjoyed this look around London. It's absolutely thanks to my patrons that I'm able to do stuff like this. If it weren't for them, I would have to be working every single day. I would not be able to take a day off tour guiding to just walk around with a camera. So thank you very much to you guys. You have made this video possible. If you would like to join them, there is a link to my patron in the description. Thank you very much for coming around with me and I will see you next time.